Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, your host and your local technical consultant with Altium. And today we are going to be looking at another viewer question. Now my videographer is still taking a little time off and he definitely deserves it. So in the meantime, we're gonna look at this viewer question and then we'll get back into the normal format. So let's take a look. Don Bean writes, Hi Zach, your videos are awesome. I had a situation come up that I think takes your coplanar line with no ground plane one step further. How about routing a diff pair on a single layer board? Is this possible? Well, the answer is yes, it is possible. Technically, you could route it any way you want to. The question is whether or not you're going to, number one, meet your impedance target, number two, be able to prevent any possible signal integrity problems that might arise in the process. So, let's go ahead and look at this, specifically with respect to differential pair routing with one layer, or possibly with two layers, but with a ground plane placed very far away from the traces. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. The question essentially asks, what can we do with differential pairs, possibly on one layer, and possibly routing with a coplanar arrangement. To get into that question, we really need to understand a couple of things, and we've talked about them in different ways in different videos, but the, the main thing we need to look at is, number one, the impedance target. So the impedance target is important, not just for the differential impedance, but really for the odd mode impedance or the impedance of a single trace and taken together, they form the differential impedance. So if you like to think about the differential impedance or the odd mode impedance, either way is fine because you can get to the same result no matter what. The other thing that we have to think about is how the fields are affected by the presence of any nearby ground. And so it kind of helps to look at what happens when there's no ground in a co planar arrangement, um, such as like with a strip line, versus when you're going to do it on the surface layer and then you just have uh, then you just have the, the nearby ground pour for your coplanar arrangement, or when you just have a regular strip line, uh, differential pair, and then you bring in some ground nearby, and so how all of that affects the fields. So what I'm showing here on screen is kind of a cross-sectional view of what happens uh, with a strip line when we have um, some nearby ground. And there's all these elements, uh, or I should say there's all these uh, parasitic capacitive elements that combine between these two pairs to produce, number one, the return current between the two pairs, and then number two, uh, the impedance of each individual trace, which then combines to give you a differential impedance. So I always kind of like to show uh, the parasitics drawn out like this from uh, the cross-sectional view or a side view um, and then the top view. The conductors themselves do have some parasitic inductance um, just from the virtue that you have a current loop that is formed with these uh, conductors as well as the, near the nearby ground planes. But then there's also some capacitance that exists between these elements. And if you essentially take this ground away, so the top uh, and the bottom ground in this strip line arrangement away, then you take away this parasitic capacitance. If you bring in some ground nearby, you can restore the parasitic capacitance regardless of the placement of these two planes on the top and the, on the bottom of the strip line. Now, what I've shown here in this uh, current graph is the return current in the planes. Now, everybody likes to say, well, you know, there is no return current in the planes. and That's not exactly true. Uh, there is a little bit of return current in the planes. In fact, for the two return currents between the plus side and the minus side to cancel each other, the two, uh, the two ends of the pair would basically have to be right on top of each other. So they'd have to be coincident in space, which is obviously not really possible. But what we get is we do get a little bit of return current from here into the ground plane, a little bit of return current here into the ground plane, and um, then they basically kind of flow together and then cancel each other. So it, it really is negligible. What really matters is the fact that we have some uh, parasitic capacitance here between these two, and it's that parasitic capacitance that is, number one, going to set the impedance of the pair as well as set the impedance of an individual trace to the required value. What happens when we have some ground nearby? What do we ha what do we have going on here? So when we have some ground nearby our differential pair, uh, we can actually see how it affects the fields. So the loops here are the magnetic field 
and you can see that the magnetic field terminates tangentially along the planes, exactly as it should. Uh, and then the electric fields uh, terminate orthogonally along the plane, exactly as they should. And so you can see where the electric fields start to terminate when there is some nearby ground. Now, if we were to instead take these ground regions, take them off, put them on the sides of the trace. Now, we could draw a similar picture. We would instead have the electric field lines bridging between these two ends of the pair. Then we'd have other electric field lines uh, bridging over to the nearby ground off here onto the right. So we would have a little bit of a modified field distribution, but we could still get some level of termination around the trace. So by doing this on the surface layer, you can affect the radiated loss from this differential pair based on where you put the ground. Now, how does it affect the impedance? To figure that out, we want to look inside Altium Designer and we can use its field solver. There are other field solver tools that you can use. Um, I'm actually gonna run over in an upcoming video why uh, not all calculators are really created equal. Um, we actually created a calculator on uh, one of the blogs and um, I went ahead and just created that calculator just to kind of show that, yeah, you can get a, a decent result for impedance with some differential pair calculators. They don't always produce uh, accurate results and a lot of uh, calculators don't even produce the same results. That's a topic for another video and um, I'll get into that more deeply uh, when we talk about some stuff with impedance models. For now, I want to get into Altium Designer and just kind of show uh, how we can go about uh, getting a impedance value uh, when we have a differential pair that maybe doesn't have a ground plane or has a ground plane located very far from it, as well as what happens when we have uh, a coplanar arrangement. So right now I'm just kind of inside a new PCB and I have my stack up here. Let's open up the impedance window and we'll go ahead and add an impedance profile. Okay, so first things first, what do I need to do? Well, let's just assume that we're going to be routing differential, 100 ohms, and you know, your, your protocol might not be 100 ohms, maybe it's you know 90 ohms or whatever else. Point is, we're going to have a, our 100 ohm impedance here uh, for the differential impedance. And let's see what happens if I, let's say, make my, uh, my core layer uh, you know, 62 mils thick. You can start to see what happens when we don't have any ground around. The, the width starts to increase, uh, and it only gets up to 10 mils on a standard uh, thickness board. But let's say that we had absolutely no copper on the other plane. So as I mentioned in the, or on the other layer, I should say, um, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this would essentially be the same thing as just taking this thickness and going really big with it. Eventually, as we take the thickness and we get bigger, what do we see happening? Well, with the differential pair, what we actually have is we have much stronger coupling between the two traces. And so I'm just going to have some fun and make this 6,200 mils very large. Uh, eventually, this thing is going to stop changing um, just because uh, we're now outside the valid range of where the model works. But uh, let's maybe go down to 1,000 here just for fun. Yeah, so you can see we're not really getting any more response from the uh, from the differential pair uh, calculator here. So anyways, if we were very close, you know, we would expect to see much smaller width exactly as we as we see here. So the point here is that you can actually hit the impedance target between the two traces without having ground really close. And that's just due to the coupling between the two traces as I showed in the previous graphic. So that's nice and easy to understand. It's essentially there's some capacitance somewhere that you would put into a transmission line model that defines the impedance. Here it's just the capacitance between the two traces or the total capacitance, uh, or rather the mutual capacitance of this entire structure uh, when there's a ground plane present. So, you know, is it that 10 mils or 100 mils? Doesn't really matter. Somewhere there's gonna be a return current that's very close by. And so, and this should be uh, really important and, and uh, for anyone that's considering, you know, designing a differential uh, channel, but they don't wanna keep the pairs close together. You know, when people talk about coupling uh, in a differential pair, uh, they, they're really trying to come up with a reason that they need to keep the, the traces very close together. 
Now, when you have a very thick dielectric, you have to keep the traces very close together because it is that distance between them that will set the impedance of each of the traces individually as well as the pair together. Now, let's take the same arrangement and throw some ground pour on the same layer as the pair. So we're gonna do differential coplanar. What do you see? Well, you can already see here that even with a very thick dielectric, in fact, it's it's uh, so thick that it would be physically unrealizable <laughs> in most situations. Uh, this is, you know, 25 millimeters or one inch thick. Here you can see that it is not just the coupling uh, with traces between each other, but also the coupling back to the nearby ground that then allows you to get to a smaller width for this particular target impedance. Now, just to, to make the point here, you have to route these two traces together because if I were to take this width and plug it into the single, uh, the, the single-ended uh, calculation here, in fact, I'm gonna do that right now, just a regular single-ended microstrip. If I plug that width in here, what's my impedance? Well, it's 227 ohms. Okay, and you can see it right down here in this portion of the screen, 227 ohms. Obviously, we're not hitting the odd mode impedance value. If you are going to try and hit an impedance value with a differential pair, when you have a very long distance to your ground plane, you can hit the impedance target. You can do it. Obviously, we've just done it. Um, however, uh, be careful here because you have to keep those traces together. That's what's setting your impedance. There's another issue here, which is with radiation, as I mentioned before. So uh, if you have this arrangement where you bring the ground close, you have more uh, uh, confinement of the field around these traces uh, near the ground. As you take the ground away, there is less strong confinement around these two traces. And then if you eventually take away the coplanar uh, arrangement and just have regular old differential microstrips, now you have very low uh, confinement of the field around these traces and so you get greater losses. Now that field can still be picked up by other signals in the design and in fact uh, there is a way to define crosstalk between differential pairs and so it's sometimes said that you know differential pairs don't emit noise. It's not exactly true they do emit noise it's just that it can be picked up as differential mode noise and that differential mode noise matters for other differential pairs. So there is something called differential crosstalk and I'll link to a blog about differential crosstalk in the description. So go, so go check that out if you want to learn about this. So that is actually very important if you are looking at uh, routing differential pairs without any nearby ground because that's going to allow the field to essentially spread out around the trace and each of those signals could induce crosstalk elsewhere around the trace. So just be careful about noise. That's why if you are gonna do this on a standard thickness, you know, two layer board, let's say 62 mils thick, you definitely wanna do the coplanar arrangement. Number one, you're gonna have smaller widths. Uh, number two, you are gonna get some better shielding or better field confinement around uh, these two traces. Hopefully it'll be less noise. Now, the best situation is where instead of, you know, 62 mils, let's say we have six mils. We can get them even smaller if we need to, especially with 100 ohm target impedance. We could also space them out, let's say, you know, 10 mil clearance, okay? 10 mil clearance, we can get slightly larger widths. And uh, actually, let's recalculate this just to check here. Um, so 10 mil spacing and 10 mil gap. There we go. So let's uh, recalculate this. So yeah, so we can get to slightly larger traces. Okay. So, you know, maybe we want that just because, you know, if we have like a four mil dielectric, let's say for a five mil gap, five mil spacing, it requires a trace width that's so small, it actually becomes difficult to manufacture. So then, you know, you can actually increase the gap and the spacing, you can get to a wider width. So if you are going to do any type of differential pair routing on a two layer board, it is best to do it as a coplanar arrangement. Uh, then you can keep the traces together and you're going to have very nice small traces or you could route them apart but you have to make sure that the individual trace impedance hits the odd mode specification 
and not necessarily the characteristic specification. Those are not always the same. I've talked about this a number of times. Um, I'll link to a blog that describes kind of this difference uh, in the description. So go check that out also. All right, everybody. So hopefully that clears up what you can do with differential coplanar routing. You can do differential pair coplanar routing even without ground, you just have to make sure that you are accounting for the potential for noise. Now, there's two sides to the noise coin. First is the noise you emit, but the second is the noise that you receive. So, differential pairs without nearby ground have less shielding. They can receive more noise, potentially more noise, and that noise could be differential mode noise, and it is differential mode noise that you don't necessarily want to be received by your differential pairs. That is the noise that your receiver will not be immune to, and it could corrupt the signal at the receiving end. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you like this video, and if you do like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Send in your questions to YouTube at Altium.com, not Altium at YouTube.com. Send them into YouTube at Altium.com. We love getting your questions. We're planning another Q&A session, so if you want to get your question into the Q&A queue, send it on over. And last but not least, when you're designing your stack up, what are you supposed to do? Don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.